Hi everyone, welcome back to The Technical View. This is where we look at the world indices from a technical analysis point of view. Um, it's a great way just to get another opinion to see uh, what someone else is doing. We're looking at the S&P 500, the FTSE 100, the Shanghai Composite in China, the BSE 30 in India, and the All Ordinaries Down Under Australia, which is the market that I personally trade as well. Uh, let's just start with the S&P 500 because um, that tends to have probably the biggest impact on all the other world markets as well. Um, we've been looking at this resistance level over the last couple of weeks. Pretty basic stuff. Um, obviously, there's your trend line there. The, the resistance level is probably about 2100 currently. And here's the cool thing about that, is that price actually tends to consolidate around those support and resistance levels. So what we're seeing here is, um, is this I'd say it's a, a short to medium term continuation pattern. We've got two two to three peaks now, um, two to three troughs now as well. And really, we're just looking for it to, to break out to the upside above 2100 for it to be a, a sort of positive or a bullish signal. Now, recently it did find support at its 50% level. So technically, if we look at um, retracements, if they find support at the 50% level of their previous move, that is a strong sign. So, you know, I mean, it's looking okay from that point of view. One other thing that we need to keep in mind is on the longer term, um, that, that large head and shoulders pattern that we were looking at um, last week as well. For those of you who don't, uh, you know, it's a pretty common pattern. We've got, you know, the, the shoulder, the head, and then the right hand shoulder. Um, but really, you know, because it is such a long term pattern, it would have to break below the neckline for it to, for things to really melt down. And that is currently at about the 1900 level. So really, um, I'd be watching out for that one. But in the meantime, we've got this medium term continuation pattern to look out for. Just quickly as well, with that head and shoulders pattern, um, these are real, really, really long-term patterns. And the same thing did happen in 2010 to 2011. Obviously, we had that sort of mini bear market in, uh, in 2011. And here's our right-hand shoulder here. See how the right-hand shoulder never made it back down to the neckline. So, in other words, if we actually have a look at that, let's check that out. Okay, okay, so that's quite interesting. See how that found support really just before the 50% retracement level as well. So that is something to keep in mind. Obviously on the S&P 500, if that, uh, if that level does hold, then that's happy days. And we could see, well, from 2012 to, to today, we saw some really huge upward moves on the S&P 500. Really, really great bullish, um, bullish territory there. So, I mean, I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but it's going to be good news if that level does hold and if it does break out to the upside. If it doesn't, of course, that level of 1900 is the one to watch. Let's quickly look at the FTSE now, um, the FTSE 100. Um, let's just say this one is not looking as good. In fact, if we were to, to bring out that 50% retracement level again, um, it's actually happening to the opposite side. So it's retraced down here, and now it's it hasn't been able to break back above that 50% level. Um, so obviously that's not a great sign. That's really not a good sign. Obviously that uh, that head and shoulders pattern is forming here as well. So we've got this one, and the FTSE is much closer to its to its neckline, and that neckline level is really around that 5,900 level. So that's the one to watch at the moment. If it was to break out to the upside, then I'd really be looking for a close above its um, trend line. That is really the key for the FTSE at the moment, and especially considering that that is also around that 50% retracement level. Let's quickly check out China and the Shanghai Composite. Um, this one, you know, I mean, similar pattern is happening um, in China as well. It is that that head and shoulders type arrangement. However, with the with the Shanghai Composite, we've been moving upwards in a in a pretty steady stream for the last three months. Compared to the recent volatility, it almost looks, you know, quite like a flat move. But over the last couple of weeks, we were looking at this sort of pattern here. So we've got higher troughs, which is good sign. So that's a good sign. And we've got this, this main resistance here at 3,650. Obviously, um, considering that pattern, a breakout to the upside, um, that's what I would be looking for on the Shanghai. It's turning into just a typical sort of triangle pattern. Now, obviously, that would be negated if it closed below or outside of that triangle again. Let's jump over to India now, and this is left over from the last couple of weeks as well. We've been looking at this huge channel that's that's formed, and the prices have really not been able to break out of that channel. We had the major resistance here, um, which couldn't it could not close above. So you know, I mean, that's technically. 
that happens quite a lot with your trend lines. It does tend to find support and resistance at those trend lines in the future. Looking on a longer term perspective, um, we could look at the extension of this particular trend line as well. So around 24,000 would be a major support level there. But if it does continue to head up um, and to, to actually break out of the channel, we'd be looking at about 27,500 um, for, for a good size breakout outside to the upside of that channel. In the meantime, you might see a lot of bouncing around in between. Now, last but not least, let's check out the All Ordinaries Down Under Australia. Now, this is a kind of a combination between the FTSE and the S&P 500, um, just because of those two influences on our actual market. As you can see, it does have the, the head and shoulders. However, with the strength in the, in the S&P 500 over the last couple of, uh, couple of weeks, it has actually started to move up as well. So what we've got is uh, we'll be looking for the trend line. It has broken above the trend line. So on a short term time frame, it's uh, it hasn't made any troughs. So what I'd be looking for would be for uh, for it to make a trough and then continue upwards. If it can't do that, then that's not a good sign. If it can, then obviously you know that's when I'd put more faith in this upward move. the The resistance here is about five thousand four hundred, five thousand four hundred twenty. And it is worth noting again that it is in a very similar situation to that FTSE move. It, it, it actually hasn't gotten anywhere near the 50% the retracement level recently. So it still does have quite a fair way to go. That next 50% uh, retracement level would be a decent level of resistance as well at 5,450. Looking at the downside risks, this does have the head and shoulders, so the neckline would be around the 5,000 level, and that's a nice big round number, so that's something to be very cautious of. If it does break below that, obviously, uh, yeah, that it, you'd be very cautious about being long if it were to break down below that. So there you have it, the world from a technical analysis point of view, something quick and easy. I hope you have a great week. Stop by the website if you get time, it's asxmarketwatch.com and happy trending until we meet again. Bye for now.